Championship Wrestling for 10 years, providing excellence and innovation in virtual wrestling.
Edward Elric not wasting any time, picking up from where he left off, calling out the world champion, Hall Rue Glory. We may not have to wait till Los Angeles for any mini of five. But wait a minute. Well, maybe we will have to wait. Mr. Smith. Edward Elric, not a fan of Mr. Smith, as it has been well documented throughout their history here on Excel. Mr. Smith was the one that saw Edward Elric resign with ACW at Anime Revolution. Now, what is going to happen here? Because whenever these two are together, a powder keg usually explodes. I think it's safe to say that Edward Elric is back on Excel and will do things his way for as long as he can. But Elric knows that there are enemies within that want to see him go down. Whether Mr. Smith is in charge of that movement remains to be seen. But Elric will look to fight them all off if he has to. Welcome back to Excel number 97. Hawking Johnson here. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Excel. 
Big things happening here later tonight as Edward Elric will make his return to in ring competition on Excel, taking on one half of the Excel Tag Team Champions, Lubach of Night Raid. That's happening here later tonight. Also, Akuma and Sagat, two men that will face each other for the Tokyo title at Animania 5, will be tag team action, taking on Fox and Falco of Team Star Fox. Coming up in just a few moments, Kami will go one on one against Ima Yamanaka in Glamour X action. We want to take you back to ACW Direct for Anime Revolution, where Deanne went one on one against Kumi Mito. Kumi got herself disqualified and attacked Deanne with a chair. And then Ino came into the ring. We thought she was there to save Deanne from the attack, but then Ino would stab Deanne in the back figuratively and assault Deanne alongside with Akumi, including using that very same chair Akumi used prior. So it's safe to say the naturals are done. The question being is, why did Ino do what she did? As we're back live here, you see Cammy making her way to the ring here as we get set for our opening contest here on Excel, number 97. Still to come, we will also reveal, if you did not watch the recent episode of Impulse, we will reveal the newest member into the ACW Hall of Fame for 2018. And it was a big one. herself, Ino Yamanaka, the first and former Glamour X champion, won the title in the inaugural Glamour X match at Animania 3, back in New York City. Here she is tonight, walking alone, without an insurance policy on her side, without a big giant backing her up. I still don't understand why Eno did what she did to Deanne. Maybe it's just the character in Eno. But we haven't gotten a formal explanation as to why she did that to Deanne. And with that being said, I, and I actually see Akumi walking down on the ringside here for Eno. Yeah, there she is right on your bottom right of your screen there. Bella's right here we go. Glamorex action kicking off. Excel number 97. Cammy is not here for Eno's taunting whatsoever. And Cammy going straight after the natural. Irish whip here and a big back body toss sends Eno down back first. Kicks her to the back as well. Last time we saw Cammy, as a matter of fact, was at the Excel before Anime Revolution. Where it was held in London, England. Excuse me, Manchester, England. Where Cammy got a rousing ovation from her home folk there, which was interrupted, unfortunately, by Reiko. And speaking of, wow, what a big uppercut there by Cammy. Speaking of Reiko, we have not heard that she is in the building. We have not heard that. As we were trying to figure out if Reiko Hinamoto had anything to say as it pertains to what she did to Jury last episode. Covered by Cammy. One, two. Through no, you know, with a kick out. As Reiko and Jury will go one on one once again at Animania 5 with the Glamorex Championship on the line, but not just that. Glamorex Supremacy will be on the line as well as Eno with a big elbow run right across the face of Kami. As Akumi approves from the bottom there, Eno continues her onslaught with these knife edge chops. Oh, uh, come on, a blatant eye rake right in front of the referee. It's a little bit ridiculous. But I want to address some things that have come from the last episode of Excel if I can be able to do so. Um, Aang revealing a lot of things about Mr. Smith and his outside activities from ACW. Apparently, Mr. Smith, and I did not know anything about this as well as I stated last episode, that he runs a non-profit organization called the Paradigm Foundation. Covered by Eno. One, two, kick out by Cammy. Look at the replay here. Big elbow there by Eno. Followed up with a nice extension of that leg onto Cammy as we're back live. Eno is in control. 
But back to my point. Apparently, to Mr. Smith's point, the Paradigm Foundation is basically supposed to be an organization that's going to benefit the future athletes of CAW. But if you're taking Aang's word, being backed by Edward Elric, it's nothing more than a front for money laundering and collusion. Cover. One. Two. Kick out once again by Cammy. And if that is the case, um, you know, money laundering is a very serious crime here in America. Um, that can even lead to 50 years in federal prison. So, I, I'm not going to necessarily believe Aang or Elric's words here, because they do have vendettas against Mr. Smith, and that cannot be denied. But I'm also not going to fully believe that Mr. Smith has good intentions, because the last few episodes of Excel and beyond, Mr. Smith has been doing some questionable tactics. Whether that's hiring Ed's death as his assistant, whether that's getting Nyra to be his personal sick dogs, his guards, and his hounds, if you will. Making A dress in a suit and tie, being more corporate, according to A. A lot of questions have to be answered by Mr. Smith, and I don't think Mr. Smith has really answered them quite very well as Cammy drops an elbow with a quick cover to boot here, and Eno able to escape. We'll see how that develops in Hall Glory, as Mr. Smith mentioned, is running late here tonight, but he does plan on being a part of tonight's episode. This can be with a big splash on the middle rope here as we get back to the action here. Can be having Eno back to her feet here. Kick to the midsection. And Eno here, no, can't be able to hang off from the outside. Can be with a big forearm right across Eno's face. Going to climb the turnbuckles here. Oh, spinning wheel kick. Down goes the natural. And Akumi's getting a little bit worried. I just take a look at the Cammy's offense throughout this match here. A very crisp spinning kick there by Cammy. The veteran that she is here. Sizing up for Eno something here. But no, Eno, hard elbow. Kick to the midsection. And now Eno from behind. She looks to be going for it here. Natural selection. That was a little bit more vicious than she normally puts on. But that may be a statement that she's trying to make, not just to you know others like Cammy, but to Deanna as well. Natural order to complete that double one-two punch, the cover, and Ito is victorious here tonight on Excel 97. Take a look at this again here, Ito. Taking out Cammy with blood force, with the natural selection, and would capitalize with the natural order. And that was all she wrote right then and there. You know, victorious here tonight. Maybe this new association with Ikumi Mito might be beneficial to Ina going forward. I have no idea. Wait, wait a minute. Eno has a microphone here. Let's listen in clear.
worst thing Eno has done in a while. But Deanne making it clear that revenge is on her sight and will look to take out the newly formed naturals of Ikumi and Eno. Oh man, I hope the naturals have a game plan set for Deanne. So look back at it, son, 96 last episode. Nairi was victorious over Kazuki and Ibiki. But it was what happened after was what had a lot of people buzzing. Kazuki apparently had enough and took his frustrations out on Ibiki, effectively ending their partnership. And that Sunlight Heart would take out Ibiki effectively. We're going to take it to Owen Steen, who is with Kazuki Muto backstage right now. Take it away, Owen. Welcome back to Excel number 97. The road to Animania 5 continues here tonight. A lot of things going down, including our main event. Later on in this telecast, Edward Elric making his in-ring return to Excel, taking on one half of the Excel Tag Team Champions, Lubok of Nairi. That is happening later on tonight in our main event. But coming up in a few short moments, Team Star Fox will take on the tandem of Akuma and... S wait a minute. Wait a minute. Take the camera back there. Really. Get a camera back there. Oh my god! Oh my god! The avatar! That's the avatar! He's been laid out! He's been like, wait a minute! Ichigo's been laid out! Oh, 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 this oh this stinks of night! Yeah, yeah, I thought so. I thought so. It stunk of night raid! It smells of night raid! It looks of night raid! Because Aang and Ichigo have been labeled enemies of the state! Unreal! And just continues to put a lot of emphasis on the quote unquote corrupt management here on ACW Excel. Uh, we gotta take a look at this episode from Excel 96 where Akuma defeated Falco with that devastating choke slam, but Fox would assault Akuma from behind with that chair, but Sagat would come to the aid of Akuma running Fox out the ring. 
And then the stir down continued as those two will meet at Anime, Animania 5, excuse me, for the television titles. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit shooken up here. Because Aang and Ichigo need some assistance if there's been any medical assistant, assistance backstage, excuse me. I'm all flustered up here because, you know, we, we've got an assistant general manager whose job is to be neutral and objective, and here she is, apparently excited and salivating at the fact that her boys just took out two HW talents. Here. We have to. That's our job here at ACW. As the Elven Champion Sagat, the God of Moy 5, makes his appearance here in Las Vegas. As I mentioned just a few moments ago, it'll be the battle of the fighters. Who is the greatest fighter of all time? It'll be settled in Los Angeles at Animania 5 in the Staples Center as the God of Boy Thai Sagat will defend the television title against the Demon Akuma in a match many people have been waiting to see for a long, long time and it will be settled at Animania 5. Fox and Sagat will start for their respective teams here. And Fox giving Sagat some lip. And Sagat gave him an up and first trouble, you stupid idiot. Seriously, Team Star Fox. Oh, well. <laughs> Team Star Fox have been a, a thorn on Sagat and the Puma's backside. Continue every single time to be an annoyance every time Sagat and Akuma look to go head to head or have a pretty intense stare down. I don't know if it's because to prove a point or they're stupid or they're just mad. I don't know, but it hasn't worked out well for them. Sagat just on the clear offense against Fox here. And sure, why not? Why don't you knock down Falcon as well? How about that? Sagat here being the television champion has said that he wants to accept all challengers to his television title at any cost. Here's the cover. There's a two. And Fox somehow kicks out. You know, you look at the knee brace that Sagat continues to wear after it was attacked a few Excel episodes in the past few months. And it's clear that Sagat it's not 100% here, but look at this, Sagat, with those multiple kicks to the chest. Wow, it's still corrected there. But to me, it's clear that Sagat knows that his time is limited. Akuma basically said the same thing, that he has not much longer left to be doing this. 
But if, that, if there's one thing you would like to do is to be remembered as the greatest fighter of all time, and Sagat is looking to prove that claim as well. Big knee by Sagat here. Close on as Akuma has been tagged in here. And now Akuma lifts up Fox. Has him up. Drops him. Tree Trunk slammed in by the Demon. As Akuma Sagat on a roll. Look at this. A little bit of an unexpected tag team maneuver here from Sagat and Akuma. Sagat with a big clothesline. Akuma would lift Fox from the ground up. Lift him up. Drop him with a Tree Trunk slam. We are back live and Fox has gotten little to no offense against this team. Irish ripped by Akuma. Fox able to counter with a nice fireman's carry there. Big elbow sends Akuma leaning. Akuma no. Fox able to hang on from the side of the apron. Another elbow by Fox. And another one, but this time from the top rope. Quick cover by Fox. One. And we'll only get a one. Take a look at the offense of Fox. They're going to make a comeback here with that top rope forearm from the apron to the back of the ring. There's a back line here. And Fox with the, a, a rope assisted Falcon arrow. And now Falco has been tagged in. See what I did there? Because. He did the Falcon Arrow and Falcon got tagged. Anyway, it's cover one, two, and then Kuma kicks out. And this is the topic of discussion that has surrounded the Kuma that I just mentioned a few moments ago. Kuma, he's not a spring chicken anymore. He's not as, I don't know, he's not as fluid as he used to be. And it shows. I still think Akuma is a formidable opponent to anybody, but it's clear that the physical embodiment, I mean, the physical embodiment, excuse me, of Akuma is starting to see its age. And Akuma's trying to fight back against it. He is trying to defeat Father Time. But Father Time has never, ever been defeated. That is our defeat streak that will not break anytime soon. And it may spell the same for Akuma, should he not be careful. Akuma whips Falco to the corner. Big boot there by Falco. Rolls him up from behind to the cover. One, two, and Sagat breaks up the pin attempt. A little surprising there, that Sagat would just rush to Akuma's defense. Considering those two will be Animania opponents coming up in the mere few weeks at Animania 5. Which is shaping up to be the biggest Animania in company history. Whoa! Tornado DT there by Falco. And Falco, really not happy that he lost to Akuma on a sub-96. He's looking to take out some aggression as he does now tag in Fox. Fox here, looking to take any advantage here, but no, Akuma, arm drag, a slow one at that, Bigfoot did not connect to Fox, just fakes, and now Fox is going to look to take advantage. Fox has Akuma up on top of the turnbuckle, Akuma kicks Fox back here, oh wow, what a drop kick! Did not expect Akuma to be to do that, but instead of that again, boom! Hit it great, and it's executed properly after back rod. Falco just got knocked off by Akuma from the apron. And now look at this, Akuma has a chokehold grip onto Fox. And this is going to spell trouble for the Star Fox leader. Akuma has that gripped on tight. Oh, I guess not. I guess it was too much energy. Yeah, look at that, Akuma holding his arm. Yeah, yeah, Akuma, like I keep saying, Akuma, he's just not as agile, he's just not as fluid as he once was. And it's kind of a little bit painful to see. Akuma once again knocking off Falco. And it looks 
like Kuma's gonna go for a choke slam. Got him. Has the grip. Arm over the shoulder. Up and down goes Fox. And now Fox dragging. I mean, Akuma dragging the carcass of Fox to his corner here. Kuma now turning towards Sagat. A little intense there, but the tag was made. Sagat now the legal man. Kuma did not go for the pin attempt there, but what's done is done. And look at that Sagat throwing some strikes right across the chest of Fox. Fox needs to get a tag ASAP or else this match is going to be close to over. Fox with a drop breaker whips Sagat to his corner now. Falca finally tagged back into the match. Now Team Star Fox plants Sagat to the turnbuckle. What is this? Oh, wow. No way. Back suplex in stereo by Team Star Fox. That was an impressive feat. I gotta be honest. A double back suplex on the TV champion. And Falco has a chance to capitalize for Team Star Fox. Has to got him. Oh! Knee brace to the head. Oh, boy. This fun wall last the Tiger Bomb! Out goes Falco! But Fox now is in the ring! He's closed on over the top rope! Oh man, you can count to a thousand! And it's over, Johnny! It's over! Sagan Nakuma victorious here tonight! On Sun 97! Are you taking a look at Nakuma's choke stuff to Fox? And then Sagawa would put the final nail on the Team Star Fox coffin. Tiger Bomb takes out Falco. And just like that, Team Star Fox once again get embarrassed by Sagat Nakuma. I gotta tell you, Sagat Nakuma make a very intimidating tag team. I'd love to see a tag team between these two, but an enemy of five is gonna be what the future lies for Sagat Nakuma who truly is the greatest fighter of all time. So gotta let Nakuma aware, be aware he is not afraid of the hellfire, wait. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. Them's fighting words. Oh, and Sagat. Sagat will not take those words lightly. We may finally get a showdown here. Oh, wow, they're both ready. Here we go. Oh, again? The lights out are again when they're about to... F Come on. And, yeah, look at this. Akuma's gone now. This guy's getting frustrated. I am too. Man, I want to see these two fight. Enough of the lights out already. Damn it. Man, I cannot wait for Animania 5. I cannot wait. Once again, we go back to Excel 96. Jerry wanted to confront Reiko. But something happened as she was going to do that. Jerry passed out on the ramp. Probably compulsions from those concussions she's, has got, she's gotten from Reiko. But Reagan would take advantage of the situation and assault Jury Sonata with that kendo stick. But she wasn't finished. She would send Jury right towards the turnbuckle post. And then the all too familiar destructive knee that she's put towards Jury these past couple of weeks. Those two will meet at Animania 5. The question is, is Jury Sonata going to be 100% ready to take on Reiko? Because I can promise you Reiko will do whatever it takes to see that Jerry Sonata's career is over.
Oh no. Oh no. Jury, jury. Jury's passed out again. Asuka is going to look for some sort of help here. It's starting to become a scary situation. second here, we are now going to reveal the final inductee into the 2018 ACW Hall of Fame class. Take a look.
everything and tear away everything. A video game icon in every sense of the word and definition. I want to thank Mega Man as he's the final inductee into this illustrious 2018 ACW Hall of Fame class. Congratulations to all four inductees. Whoa, we're back live and Asukazama now has arrived out here and apparently is making her way towards the ring. And I've got to wonder if Asuka has had enough of what has transpired amongst this brand. Apparently also as it pertains to Jerry Sonata, hopefully Jerry has gotten some much needed medical assistance. As we're gonna hear from the Rocket here. Bang, bang, bang. Shots fired. And that will bring out the supposed Queen Cobra. Asuka has nothing to lose at this point. She wants a fight. And she may very well get one. Here comes Reiko with the kendo stick in her hand. At this point, I don't think Asuka gives a damn about the consequences. Knowing damn well that Reiko will look to try to dismantle her like she has a bunch of others. And Reiko is walking down to the ring. This could be a very ugly situation if nothing is being done about it right now. Asuka is not backing down here. Oh man. And now Asuka on the apron here. She's daring Reiko to do something. That is someone that has no fear in her heart. Reiko, oh wow. Wow, 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 look at this. Reiko is backing down from a fight. I never thought I'd see that. But this is the new Reiko now. What a coward. What an absolute coward Reiko has now become. Unbelievable. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Edward Elric versus Lubot is still to come in our main event. But Animania 5 is coming to us in just a mere few weeks. As we run down the Animania 5 card as it stands, one of our theme songs for Animania 5 is Danny California from the Red Hot Chili Peppers from their iconic album Stadium Arcadium. Now available on iTunes, Amazon, and other retailers. The traditional Road to Destiny match for both brands will happen in Animania 5. From the Impulse side, it will be Dark Magician, Neji Ayuga, Monkey D. Luffy, and Zuko competing in an all-star lineup. Which one of these four men that have a case, no pun intended, to become the briefcase holder from the Impulse Road to Destiny match? And then on the opposite side of the fence, for the Excel Road to Destiny match, it will be Tatsumi, Somi Kihara, Joe Agashi, and Rock Lee, the future of this league to decide who will walk out of Los Angeles, the XL Road to Destiny briefcase holder. And then you want to talk about more history. One man will walk away with two titles at the end of this night as he, the Intercontinental Champion, will go one-on-one -on -one against the Cruiserweight Champion, Aaron Yeager, where both the Intercontinental and Cruiserweight titles will be on the line, up for grabs. Who is walking out? The new double champion. History will be made in the Staples Center. And also Animania 5. Respect will be the theme of this match. As Night Raids, Blue Block and Wave will defend the XL Tag Team titles 
against Ichigo and Aang. Should Ichigo and Aang not be successful, they will be banned from world title contention next season. They have been labeled enemies of state. Can they defeat the dominant Night Ring? And also from the other side of things, our other theme song for Anime and 5 is Born to Lead by Eclipse from their album Momentum, also available on iTunes, Amazon, and other retailers. And also we will go through the rest of the Anime and 5 card as it stands right now. Also added from the Impulse side, last episode of Impulse, it will be Goten, the prodigy going one on one against the future Trunks. In the future of the Saiyan being on the line, the Saiyan race, with Goku being the special enforcer of this match, will Goten prove to be the ultimate Saiyan, or will Trunks finally put the stop to Goten's narcissistic attitude? The greatest fighter of all time will be the side of Anime Mania 5. As sick out the God of Boy 5, the television champion will defend it against Akuma. Akuma stated that Father Time has not been defeated, and for both men, their times can very well be up. But for one night, they will look to be spectacular. The question is who will leave with the title as television champion and the greatest fighter of all time. Glamour X Supremacy goes down Anime Mania 5 as Joey Sonata. The Glamour Champion defends it against the newly Christian Draco, the Queen Cobra. Jerry Sonata at this point does not look to be 100% for this matchup and may very well not make it to Los Angeles. But will Draco find a way to take advantage and defeat Jory in the seventh match that we did not get in the best of seven series? The final debate within the greatest anime rivalry in modern history as Sasuke and Chin will defend the Impulse World title against the Impulse Rebel winner, Moruto Uzumaki. For the first time ever, these two men of rival epic proportions will meet in the pinnacle of CAW. Will Sasuke's reign continue, or will Naruto become a two-time Impulse Champion? And then the real XL Champion will be decided, which will be our main event of this illustrious Animania 5, as Hollywood Glory and Edward Owen will meet once again for the XL World Championship. Who is the true XL Champion? Elric said earlier that Hall has a side, a choice to make. Will that choice be made, or will Hall go his own way and be able to defeat Elric out of the biggest stage of them all? Ladies and gentlemen, this will be the biggest Animania of all time. It is Animania 5, 10 plus years in the making. Coming to you guys next month from Los Angeles at the Staples Center. Make sure you visit us all throughout our social media to get more information on what is sure to be the greatest Animania. Alright, I guess I'll get interrupted for no reason. But I'm not one to really question these three individuals, so I guess I will keep my mouth shut. Nonetheless, it is now time for our main event of the evening. Edward Elric made his return to HW Cell earlier tonight and picked up from where he left off where he called out Hall of Glory before their matchup at Anime 5 for the Excel title. Mr. Smith told Elric not only is Hall Room running late that he will appear on the show later tonight, which he hasn't so far, but that he will face one half of the Excel Tag Team Champions, one third, one fourth if you really come to SDF, of Night Raid. Booba will be Edward Elric's opponent here tonight on Excel number 97.
fight me and Elric. Patching up certain things here and there. I do not approve the way he left the first time here at ACW. I just don't. But Edward Elric is looking to rectify that. I don't want to in this case. This is to rectify that by becoming Excel World Champion once again for a second time. Animania 5 against the three time Excel World Champion, the current champion, Paul Rugori. The bell is rung, and here we go. And Lubak running towards Elric, and Elric not wasting any time. Gonna stop Lubak in his tracks. Now it's very clear that earlier tonight, we saw Aang and Ichigo, they were wiped out backstage inside the locker room. I have no doubt in my mind that Nairay, more specifically, probably waving Lubak had something to do with that, especially with Ezra looking on towards the carnage. Aang and Ichigo have been labeled as enemies of the state here in ACW Excel. Edward Elric knows that despite him not being labeled that as such, He's been very much persona non grata with the nation of programming until recently. A cover. The Lubak kicks out before one. General Ezdef, if you want my honest opinion, General Ezdef has really. Oh, wait, cover here by Elric with that Bulldog. One. Kick out. And Elric working over Lubak. Let's take a look at that Bulldog once again. Face first. Back live and Elric is in firm control. As I, as I was going to state here, to all my opinion, General Esden, to me, has become an infiltrator. You may have your opinions towards Mr. Smith, good, bad, or otherwise, but it's no denying the fact that General Esden is using her new position in power as Mr. Smith's assistant to use that as her advantage to do what she pretty much wants to do. Lubak now has that bulldog of his own. He's taking control here. Big Nate sets down the full metal alchemist. I don't deny that Elric is possibly being weakened by Animania 5. If you recall at episode 96 that just happened recently, you know, Mr. Smith did acknowledge that, you know, Hall Glory cooperated with him. What that cooperation had to do with, I have no idea. Covered by Lubak. There's one. There's two. Shoulders down. Elric. Able to get out in 4 3. Let's take a look at that Bulldog from Lubak from the middle rope from earlier. Followed up with a big knee striking Elric down to the ground. We are back live here. Lubak not wasting any time. Going to the top turnbuckle. Elric. Oh, and a big drop kick by Lubak. Another pin attempt. Shoulders are down. Two. And again, Elric gets his shoulder up before the three. I don't think Lubak gets enough credit. I know that you have the impressiveness of Wave and the leadership and tactical skill of Tatsumi. But I think Lubak, in my opinion, is probably the purest wrestler out of the three of Night Rain. I know a lot of people don't give Lubak credit, but when Lubak comes to wrestle, he can wrestle. Oh, went for a knee strike, did not connect there. Elric went for something, but Lubak with a jawbreaker counter. Kick, no, got the leg. Dragon screw sends down Lubak. And Elric throwing punches right across the face of Lubak. Elric, not, you know, a stranger to Lubak. If you recall, it was Lubak and Elric that competed one-on-one -on -one in the very first match of the Elite Tournament. 2017 as Elric cross body from the middle rope quick cover one shoulders down for a two and no Elric it's a shoulder up as I was saying Elric and Lubach competed in the first match of the 2017 Elite Tournament which obviously Edward Elric eventually won defeating and going through every single member of Night Ray to do so now Elric big DDT Seems to me Elric hasn't lost a step. But if you followed him in other various CAW leagues, you would know that. Now wait, wait, Lubak. Now here with his own DDT. It's like Lubak is playing doppelganger with Elric here a little bit. 
Elric slow to his feet here as Lubon is waiting from the top turnbuckle. Big elbow drop! Down goes the so-called best in the world. Whew. Take a look at this again. Look at this. Elric with the big DDT. And then Lubon, not a minute later, will go for a big DDT of his own. Followed up with a big standing elbow drop. Set him down. The Full Metal Alchemist. Back live here in Lubon. Going back and forth with Elric here. Elric. Oh, wait a minute. Stand corrected. Big punch in the ribcage here. Oh, here we go. Alchemy time. No, Lubok flipped out of it. Wow. That was impressive. Oh, we could be in trouble here. Never want to cut out someone like Lubok. And he is one half of the XL Tag Team Champions after all. Uh, oh, my God. For a corkscrew moonsault, nobody was home. Elric moved out the way very perfectly. And now Elric is going to take control here. Oh, Lubok able to counter with that whip there. Ducks under. And no, Elric able to take down Lubok with an arm drag. Has Lubok up here. Oh, wow. If this isn't a message, I don't know what is. Rave of Destiny by Edward Elric. Oh, wait a minute. I know there's Wave. There is Wave. And Elric Pete's game here. Look at this. Jumps over the ropes and takes that wave. The full metal on the Mrs. Pet. Oh, wow. There's the XL World Champion, Haru Glory, on stage. And Elric found him. Oh, wow. We may very well not wait till Animania 5 for these two explode right now. And Wait a minute. Tatsumi with a chair. Oh, come on. Tatsumi from behind uses the chair to take out Elric. This, this, this is fishy. Uh oh, Mr. Smith appearing right beside Haru as Tatsumi continues the attack onto Alric. Oh no, oh no! And Curcio! And then Smith and Haru talk. What is going on here? Has, has Haru chosen a side? Is there even a side for Haru to choose? What in the hell is going on here? 